Good evening, good. Jason. How are you? Brother Matt, how's everything? Doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, doing, doing good. That's uh, so my niece, beautiful voice. Uh, I totally appreciate her for doing that for us and absolutely blessing us with that. So this is Jason Oliver, everyone. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, you know, you're getting ready to talk about uh, pursuing a better way to live life. And right. uh, I really uh, appreciate you being on tonight. Um, this is uh, such a blessing just to bring Christians together. Uh, that's what we're doing and uh, just sharing people's stories. So let's jump right in. Let's tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, then we'll jump into your story and, and all the things that you do. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you. One, um, it's an honor um, and a blessing to even be here. So I want to thank you first for having this platform um, for us to get together and for us to be able to share our stories and share what it is that we're doing. This way we can just help people throughout the world. So um, Jason Oliver, I live in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm married to a wonderful wife. I have uh, two boys and just for conversation's sake, I like to say I have two boys and two girls. The two girls are actually just two pit bulls. But it just sounds good saying it. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. So um, certified life, life coach and mentor. Um, I'm actually starting to rebrand myself with uh, my coaching business. Um, and getting into out in the community to uh, to help them to help the community be better. Yeah. Um, I'm also uh, an analyst. Um, I work for a large company here in Jacksonville. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID nineteen, I've I've been furloughed for at least ninety days. Yeah. Um, so, and per what they say, it can last up to six months. We yeah. don't know. So, in that time, I'm just uh, I'm here. Uh, making sure I work on personal development and working on the things that I've been trying to get myself to do for the last couple of years. So yeah. that's what I'm, that's what I'm up to now. Yeah. And unfortunately you're one of 30 million people, right. That are without a job, uh, currently. So it's, it's too much of this going on in uh, the United States and in the world right now. And it, it just makes it hard, um, you know, for people, in their in this transition time you got one you got two things you can do right you can uh the old fight or flight thing you can right lay down and you can you know feel sorry for yourself or you can you know pick yourself up and like we used to say in the marine corps pick yourself up tighten your bootstraps and get on with it and that's Absolutely. really kind of what you're doing you know you're working hard and and you know you're going to make a huge difference in people's lives but there's a little bit behind your story right there's a little bit behind who jason oliver is and so let's talk a little bit about that Okay. Um, pursuing this better life, I would say, started uh, right around the age 12, 13. Um, uh, I remember a fight uh, that my parents got into, and uh, it ended up leading to my mother almost losing her eye. So um, they got into a fight. Um, my mother says that my father pushed his thumb into her eye, and my father says that they were tussling and fell, and his finger went her eye. But um, Either way, most of the part after from that situ <clears throat> from that situation on, uh, my father became mostly a, a child support check. Um, uh, he lived only three miles away, but we barely saw him. Um, he lived in the Bronx. Uh, that's where we was originally born and raised. Uh, so uh, we would travel once a month back and forth from Long Island to to the Bronx to see him and everything. But uh, that's where it really started. So when that started, my mother took on a night job. She was working for a large factory in, uh, in New York. And uh, the night differential at that time was a whole lot more. So she switched to work at nights. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing after, probably after a few months in, I remember she would come home right before we would go to school. And I just remember her sitting on the edge of the bed and always say, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. And I'm like, Okay, I thought I thought you said you was gonna start working nights to make more money. So why why are you complaining that there's gonna be? But I didn't ask for that. This is the stuff yeah. I just had in my head. Thank you. So I didn't under, I didn't understand it. So, and the funny thing is, while she was going through that and just saying, you know, there has to be a better way. You know, I took that as you know, nine to five is not not the way to go. Yeah. So, and but it takes me back to even further before that. I remember my grandparents, they loved, there was a, you know, little small show called The Cosby Show in a Different World. And that was their, that was their favorite show. And they used to always tell me, my grandfather used to always pull me to the side and say, Jason, life is about keeping up your grades. Um, keep up your grades so you can go to college and get a good job, a good paying job. 
And that's what life was. And taking that and then looking at my mother who has a nine to five and she was struggling, not so much struggling, but um, just, you know, it was a lot of hard work. It too didn't match up. So at that point I said, you know what, I'm not going to get a nine to five. So I did everything I could not to make, to make sure I did not have a nine to five. So, yeah. um, um, so that led me to a life of pursuing my own way. I mean, um, I became, um, in a part that kind of set me back, uh, I became, I, when my father left the house, I became the man of the house. Yeah. And um, hindsight 2020, you know, that was a, that was a burden that um, I should have been placed in. Yeah. I mean, I understand I was proud of it, but um, it left me, it left a lot of shortcomings with me. Yeah. So even with uh, raising my family, when I first started my family and got married, it was things that I was used to doing that, you know, were not healthy. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I, I'm used to being a man of the house and that I can just pick up and go to the store whenever I feel like it. Yeah. And I never, the first time I did that with my wife, she was taking a nap and I left to go to the store and didn't say nothing. And she calls me, you know, where are you at? I'm, yeah. Where are you at? You <laughs> so, um, but that just left me in a, um, that just left me in a spot to where I was not going to, um, I was not going to work a nine to five. I was never going to work a nine to five. I've made that decree that I'm never going to work a nine to five. And, but uh, I had a lot of contacts in the music business. Um, so I wanted to start pursuing that. So I wanted to become a producer, um, basically become the next P Diddy. So yeah. I was, I went to school for it. I was doing studio time. I was a, uh, I was working on a lot of famous albums, um, just getting my experience in. And unfortunately, in, in, the, in, in the 90s, in New York, early 2000s, you know, being in the hip hop business was synonymous with living, doing things in the street. Yeah. So it kind of went hand in hand. So I did get into, I, there were some things I was a part of that I shouldn't have been a part of. And what made me there was just living doing that for a couple of years being sneaky with it nobody really knew what was going on what i was doing but i was making money I, i'll never forget my brother actually uh almost i was scared my brother caught me with a whole lot of money he said where are you getting all these 20s from and i was like oh <laughs> yeah i'm gonna yeah. change something up because i almost got caught <laughs> so, <laughs> so that that just let me say you know what it's not this this business me doing this stuff in the street is not is not um it's, it's not healthy yeah and i made that decision when i um got into a little confrontation with a with a few people um and it ended up leading me to being hit by a piece of bullet i can tell you this um if i was hit with that bullet i would have lost the arm but um it hit, actually hit a stop sign pole first and shattered and a piece of the bullet went into my arm so at that point, I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to change this, change this around a bit. So, yeah. um, but my pursuit was always to find a different way, find a different way, find a better way for me to be successful and live a, a successful life. So, yeah. Um, my uh, my wife now, we were at, we actually knew each other since we were fourteen, okay. and we decided to become a couple. Um, and when we did that. Uh, I, me being in the music business, her family had a black sheep um, who was also in the music business. Mm -hmm. So my wife was a little worried about how I would look to her family um, with me being in the music business and this other family being in the music business. And he has a, he has a black mark on the family. They were afraid that they, she was afraid I was going to get looked at in the same light. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm with two totally different people, but because I loved her, I actually went on ahead and got a nine to five. Yeah. And let me tell you, it was one of those things that I regret ever since. But um, at that time, I regretted it. But uh, yeah. it leads me to now to where, truthfully, I'm still working a nine to five. Yeah. Um, I love what I do now. I, I really do. Um, however, the sad part is um, being with me wanted to be more independent and be um, an entrepreneur and, and self-sustaining is that, you know, during this crisis, they still have control over my income and my time and stuff. So um, that's the that's the big downfall and one of the things that I'm looking to change as I become uh, start to help and serve in the community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's one of the big things. I mean, 
uh, you know, a lot of things. I, well, we just had Entrepreneurs United a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Jason Marshall uh, will tell you, Grace Marshall Jr. will tell you, you know, if you're not thinking of having multiple streams of income, you're wrong, right? right. Think about that now. Right now, there's 30 million people plus in the United States without a job. But if they'd have had multiple streams of income, you know, moving forward, they would have had, you know, maybe be able to sustain that, you know? Absolutely. Um, so you do have to branch out. You do have to think differently. You got to think. And as a man, you know, obviously you don't want to get caught up in that position where you're not taking care of yourself or your family, right? Right, right. That family first. So you do have to think about what can I do to do it? Doesn't mean it's bad to have a nine to five, but you can also sprint a little bit after at night and on the weekends too, right? Right, absolutely. And that's what's going to take for you to be, to, to have a better life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, you know, a little bit in the same, in, in the same light, you know, I'm a, I'm a pilot for Penske, right? And so, mm -hmm. but I also do contracting work and I also do convene and also do, so, you know, right, right. you just kind of go at it. So, um, so that's, um, you know, that's interesting. So, but so not wanting to, to live that life of a nine to five, really, I, I say when, when we live the life of a nine to five, right, we're working for the man. Mm -hmm. what we're doing or <laughs> we're working for the right. man. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you got to do mm -hmm. things differently. You got to do things. Right. Different. And the, the thing is, the thing I want to get to just really clarify about working a nine to five and the working a nine to five just wasn't for me because I saw it as um, because of what I saw my mother go through, working a nine to five was, 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 forgive my French, but it was hell. Yeah. Um, so, and I saw a life of mediocrity. So growing up and seeing that we as a family, I have a brother and two sisters and we didn't do much as a family as far as go out and enjoy life. Yeah. So it's really the part of having a nine to five. A lot of what I'm seeing is a lot of, it takes a lot of people's joy in there and it puts them in a state of mediocrity. Yeah. And that's the point that I want to get away. From, I really want to get away from. Yeah. So you say right here, you say, uh, you know, when you're talking about working and you're talking about doing the things you're doing, it's a necessity to please others. Right. Right. Um, right. An expense for you. Right. Right. So a lot, I mean, what really got me started into, into going into the workforce was the love that I had for my, my wife and what she felt how I would look to the family. Now, this is a family that I adored. I didn't meet her whole family, but this one piece, I was, this one part, uh, things get over Thanksgiving, I want to say it was probably 1999 or so. Mm -hmm. I was going to meet her, her extended, I was going to meet her sister and her brother and a couple other people that lived, that did not live in the area. And she asked me and begged me to get a job. And I was adamant against it. I was like, no, I'm not getting a job. I'm not doing a nine to five. I'm doing good here. I yeah. had a little bit of a, a legal money saved up. So it was like, <laughs> I'm not getting, I'm not getting a nine to five at all. Yeah. Uh, but say she broke me down and uh, she broke me down. And I said, okay, I'll go ahead and get a nine to five. And the funny thing is from that point on, um, all I, I realized I started to compromise myself with, various people so i will compromise myself with with my happiness and my growth um to do something for somebody else yeah. so it will set me back so that was one thing there was a couple of things that happened in my youth so i was always in a constant state of trying to help or satisfy somebody else and i would and i would sacrifice myself um for yeah. it so absolutely so a question for you that's there is yes. um how do you maintain your energy and what drives you this is coming from somebody listening. Well, what drives me, I can tell you, is um, I want to build a legacy. Mm -hmm. um, I want to build a legacy. I can tell you this. Uh, I can tell you where that started. Um, that started where my, when my son in 2004, that was, my son was probably about two, 2004, 2005. My son was about a year, year uh, two years old. And my brother-in-law was actually going to move down here to Florida. Um, so what we did was we took a trip here to Florida, to Tampa, Florida, and we checked it out and the homes were so much cheaper and we was going to have a home built and everything. So we moved down to Florida and the business that I actually had with a partner of mine, um, I was like, well, maybe let's see if we can expand it in, in Florida. So I went, checked out the scene, checked out Tampa, um, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely hated it. I, I'm a city boy from New York and just coming down to, to, to Tampa was, it was not the pace of New York. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just, uh, I hated it. But when we went back to New York, I was laying my son down in his crib 
and uh, I was laying him down in the crib. It was over the summer and his crib was underneath a window. And I heard shots ring out and the car peel off blocks away. And as soon as I laid him down and I heard that, I looked at my wife and I said, we're moving to Florida. Yeah. I want, I want, to, I want to get out of New York. I, we need this change. We need this change. If, I'm, if I really care about my son and what, how he grows up, I don't want him to see the same thing that I saw. He doesn't need to see all that. All that. So um, that was a decision. And then we moved down in 2000. And, well, my wife moved down in 2005 and I moved down in 2006. So Yeah. So did but, you move uh, to Jacksonville straight away from there? No, we moved to Tampa, moved to Tampa. I lived in Tampa for almost 10 years. Um, yeah. I hated it for the first, probably for the first two years, I hated it. <laughs> um, but what turned me around was um, um, I was working. There was the, the difference, the difference between a uh, salary in New York and, and, and Florida was, was ridiculous. I mean, yeah. The same job I did in New York was four to five dollars less in Florida, and it, it it drove me it drove me nuts for a while. So we lived in Tampa, but after about two years, I actually found a church. Um, yeah. Found a church. I said uh, I worked a whole lot of overtime, and I was like, if this check doesn't turn out the way I want it, we're leaving. We're leaving back to New York. And yeah. before I got paid, I saw uh, there was a new pastor who started a new church in the area, and that's where my life turned around to say, you know what, Florida, Florida is cool. So I started to yeah. see the beauty in Florida and living in Florida. So, yeah, well, you have two people on here. Um, uh, one is Melinda. When you said Tampa, you didn't like Tampa. She said, hey, hey, LOL. It's because mm -hmm. she lives in Tampa. And then you have mm -hmm. Eugene Brown. Both of these are, are so important to me uh, and Kadeen, but Eugene Brown um, went to the University of Tampa. So yep. uh, you got three Tampa. Downtown. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you got it. We got a bunch of thumbs up and hearts on that one. So okay. yeah, <laughs> uh, Tampa. So um, uh, awesome. So, so you're in Tampa and uh, you're making good things happen. Um, now, while you were down there uh, and at this church, right. And all that, you started a group uh, with some men. Am I correct with that? Yes. Um, well, I, do, I didn't start it. The group started, um, Oh, the group started in in that church. Yeah, um, it, was, that church yeah. it was a men's ministry called Adam, um, and it started there. And well, we end up leaving that church, but yeah. before we we was with that church for about five years. Okay, and we built some great relationships. Some of our best friends are still my best friend is still in is still living in Tampa. Um, my youngest son's godparents are still living in Tampa. So we built some great relationships um, yeah. in that church. And we're all still friends now. Even uh, the church is no longer, but everybody that was a part of that church at that time, we're all still connected. We're still friends on Facebook. So, um, but yeah, that, that men's group started, uh, started there. And once we, once everything parted, it was like, you know, we still, what we learned in that men's group was the fact that men still need to convene. We still need to get together. Yeah. Um, uh, and because of the fact that we still have that relationship, we carried it on. We was like, we need to start bringing other men, um, other men in. So yeah. Adam continued and still continues to this day in various parts um, to there's two other churches in Tampa that have, that have Adam, um, I have it here in Jacksonville and it's called I am Adam. I changed it up a little bit and we have a great group of men here, um, here in Jacksonville, but that the men's group is, is vital. And that's actually what another part that keeps me going. As yeah, well. talk, I want to talk about that for a minute, if you don't mind sure. stick to that, because I think this is, is so important that when you're talking about men and, um, and Grace and Marshall and myself, we talk about this uh, quite a bit is that, mm -hmm. Men, you know, sometimes it's hard for men to support men in a way where they really are open and honest and upfront with each other. But that is so important that we are able to, you know, just sit down, talk, uh, share our stories, ask for advice, share our advice with each other. So talk about that because we talked about that the other day and that's really what you guys do. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a place. Um, one of the things is that you, you, the group that we have is there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to come in and you're going to be able to pour your heart out. There's going to be things that we talk about that we can't talk about with anybody else. And that's just what men, what men have. There's a lot of things that men go through where 
yes, we can share 99% with our wives, but it's that 1% that we can only share with another man. Absolutely. Um, because he'll understand what it is that we go through. So yes, we have a group of men where we, we, uh, we're vulnerable with each other. We lift each other up. If one man is going through something, um, we're all going to come together. and You're going to get two things. You're going to get support and you're going to get help and advice. Yeah. And that's what's, that's very vital and very vital to man. Because um, as we discussed before, when men, when a man commits suicide, it, it shocks everybody. Everybody's surprised because he has so much going on in his head that he doesn't speak about it and he doesn't right. talk about it. So and stays there until he can't take it anymore. And he decides to end his, end his life. But if he just, if that man just had a group or somebody he can confine in where he can be vulnerable, not be judged and get, know he's going to get some encouragement, um, it would, it would definitely change his, his mindset. And yeah. that's, that's the goal. Yeah. Cause 110% because you know, I, we talked about this the other day. A lot of us, we walk through the same life stories. You don't, think, you don't think that you do. We think that we're isolated. We think that we're alone. We think that we're the only ones going through these low times, these right. hard times, you know, these, you know, issues with money or issues with our relationships or our marriage or whatever it might be. But in reality, you're not alone. We all right. walk the same path together. And so right. it's so important that we can look at each other eye to eye as, as men and we can say, hey, you know, Jason, you're not alone. I've been mm -hmm. where you've been. And guess what? I might have been low at one point, but now I'm not, you know, right. and you lift each other up. And that's so important because the last thing you want somebody to do is to get to the point where they think there's no up and they right. think there's no way out. And that's the, sh that's the reality, just like you just talked about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the good thing about that is uh, actually a friend of mine, um, actually he's a part of Adam as well, but he actually started a men's group with his, with, uh, his church and he's using the same, he's doing his, God led him to do that. And he has pretty much the same format as we have in Adam. And I went to the, the initial one and let me tell you that the men there was like, this is what we need. This, we okay. need to speak about this. This is, it was so refreshing. It was only supposed to last, I want to say an hour and up going probably about three or four hours. And even one of the guys that was there, I took him home and we sat in the car in front of his house for another hour after that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so this is, this is what men, men need this. Men absolutely need each other, need to be built up. They need accountability. And the, the good thing is one of the guys in our Adam group says something about, about where, it's the accountability piece that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, we can say everything about, you know, we're there for each other, but it's the accountability piece. And one of the great things we have is the fact that if another man is acting, let's just say acting emotional, you know, we can check them and say, and the term th that we came up with is, you know, your slip is showing. Yeah. So when you, <laughs> there's the accountability there to where we can check you and you know what's done in love. Yeah, it's really done. Just like how our grandmother used to do, used to spank us and then tell us to give her a hug afterwards. So yeah. <laughs> get you in, get you right, and get you put put you in place, and then give you a hug on the backside. That's uh, absolutely that's awesome. And then make you a nice sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. Uh, somebody made the comment. Uh, Melinda made the comment that so many men miss out on those close relationships, and I think absolutely. that's very true. I mean, she's spot on with that because you know, well, men and women, we get so caught up in life. We get so caught up in that sprint and we just forget about, you know, what's going on, on outside of our, you know, our, our door or outside of our house and all that. And so you, you have to have that bond with men or, and women need that bond with women, not just your family members, right? You, you do right. have to step out and you need to have those friends that you can lean on and ask the, you know, what if, what if you were in this situation, what would you do? Right. right. And learn from those experiences from others. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can tell you that I went through that when I first moved to Jacksonville, where, um, you know, the company I was working for got acquired by my current company and um, they needed somebody with my expertise here in Jacksonville because they didn't have it. So when I came here, I had um, I got a, I got like three or four raises within the first year. I got a bump up in salary. I had overtime out. I mean, I was doing crazy overtime numbers. Um, but once, once the things that we implemented started to flat, flatten the curve, to say, uh, once it started to flatten the curve, I started looking around. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm still, I'm having a whole lot of time. <laughs> I was like, I had nothing. I didn't have anything, any type of out. So 
um, we actually found a church. And the first thing I did was, look, was where's the men at? Yeah. I was like, I need to find out where, where the men is, when the men are at. And um, I actually linked up with a friend of mine who had a ministry and had a ministry within that church. And it was, it's been heaven sent ever, ever, ever since. So yeah. well, that's definitely that, need that relationship. Yeah. That, that definitely need the relationships, both men and women, you know, yes. you have to, you have to be able to talk uh, to family plus friends. And that's so important. You know, there's, I have so many friends that are, are, are watching tonight uh, that I count on, I lean on, I talk to, you know, a lot of times on, on the daily, this, you know, I convene family, I'll call it that, you know, I talk to everybody that works with and around convene almost on the daily. I talked to, uh, talk to one of my great friends in Atlanta today, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's checking in, it's checking in, you know, yes. we might not be in the same place, but we can always check in and always see how everybody's doing. And, uh, one of the, one of the, I'm a board member for this one, um, I do a lot of stuff with veterans, but I'm a uh, so nonprofit called JTF 22 to zero. And it's talking about, um, you know, joint task force 22 to zero. If you're anybody knows anything about veterans, the 22 push ups, 22 suicides a day to zero. But uh, there, one of the guys made a video called battle buddies. Um, mm -hmm. And he talks about your battle buddy. You got to check in, especially for veterans, check in on your battle buddy. Uh, if something's not right, then you need to you know check in, make sure everything's okay. Right. right, and just talk to them, and you just never know when that battle buddy is is needing that. Well, that's Absolutely. a military thing. We talk about battle buddies because that's what we do in the military, but that's that's real life, right? That's real life. It is. So absolutely, it's definitely real life. And the funny thing is, uh, we always we make it a, a point to where if one of the other men, if it, if if we pop up in one another's head, make sure to go ahead and make and make that call because we 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 never know. You yeah. never know what they're going through. We never know that when we make that call, that might be right in time to stop them from doing something stupid or it might be a relief that they need or it might even give them some advice to make a better decision yeah yeah absolutely so that's, that's so important and that's kind of what happens in the video everybody should go watch it battle buddy um we're going to put it on our convene site um he gave it to me the other day i need to add it to the convene site so uh people see it somebody just said life buddies and that's really kind of what it is you know so it's having that absolutely. life buddy, right so I love that. So, um, you know, you got key discoveries um, for finding or how you found a better life, you know, and you talk to you talk about change, know yourself and, and your why. So let's talk yes. about change for a minute. You know, what does that mean to you? Change, um, change is the most hated in any language across the world. Change is the most hated word, most hated word. Um, it's the most hated word because nobody likes change. Yeah. Um, however, it's the most necessary. Um, in order for you to get anything that you want, you're going to have to go through some type of change, especially if you want a better life. You definitely need change. Um, but the, the, the specific thing about change that I like to teach is just the fact that you have to request the change. So you can know that there's a change that's needed, but that change can, that need for change can always be there until you make the request for change and it's not until you realize that you need to change something about your life or change something about a situation that's the first step in realizing that something needs to be needs to be done yeah no you that is a that, what you just said is, is an extremely important point because mm -hmm. a lot of times people get caught in a rut in life absolutely people get caught in that downturn in life and I don't care who you are. You're going to have ups. You're going to have downs. Mm -hmm. But when you have those downs, make the change. And it make may not change. be fun. That change may not be fun. It might not be something that is very pleasing at the time. But if, if you're in a situation where you're down, make the change. Make, make the, the change. change. Look for the other. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to do it right away. You have to do it right away because the more you sit and think about it and well, what if? you're not going to make a change. You're not going to make yeah. a change. As, as I like to say, fit and two don't do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so right. I mean, literally I, that's one of the best things that I think may come out of, of tonight is just talking about making that change is Absolutely. that when you, when you, when you're down on yourself or down on your life, make the change and trust, make the trust, change, trust God, trust, Absolutely. And pray. You have to pray and trust in, in God that, you know, he will take care of you, that he will lead you in that way, that he will help you uh, with that change, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Put your trust in the Lord and he will guide you. He'll give you the answers. Yeah. 
That's right. And I could go on and on about this because, you know, yep. if we want to talk about this now. I mean, you know, if you talk about unemployment and you talk about the things that are going on, a lot of this stuff is out of our hands, you know, Absolutely. But a couple of years ago, I'll just give you an example. A couple of years ago, I mean, I got medically retired from the Marine Corps. I was working in, uh, down at the Marine Corps. Um, I was always one foot in and one foot out as a contractor for the Marine Corps. Didn't really want to stay. Mm -hmm. And then I walked in one day and they said, Hey, guess what? You know, you got two weeks, right? Right. Um, and they, but then they said, but we'll offer you a raise. We'll give you a different job. And I, and I chose not to take it. Right. So I ended up thinking, well, man, I'm good. I was a Marine. Yeah. I got all this skill, you know, nobody can stop right. me. <laughs> it took me nine months to find a job, mm. you know? And then I, I tried to start some stuff. I had some bad business partners, right? That's a, you know, we all have these stories of the good things we've done, the bad things we've done, but I put my head down and worked. Right. And right. that has led to, you know, I, I spent five years and eight months flying air medical, you know, 659 patient flights. I, I, I watched 659 people's lives change. I was able to go into hospital and stand there, ask the families, can I help you with anything? Can I give you directions to the hospital? We're going to be flying the helicopter. Don't try to rush. Can I pray for you? Can I pray right. with you? Can, you know, all those different things. So I love that job. And then, you know, it led one thing led to the other. So you can look for that change. You just can't get up. You right. can't give up, you know, because it'll beat you down, you know, and all that. It so will. You, everybody has that story. So know yourself. What, is that, what, what does that mean to you? Uh, know yourself is, well, once you realize that a change is needed, um, you actually have to do a personal assessment. And you really have to be... 100% honest and truthful with yourself. Um, there, this, this is probably one of the toughest parts um, to, to the change because a lot of people don't realize where they get some habits from. A lot of stuff happened when they were a child. So you really have to do a personal assessment of what your likes are, what you don't like. And I find it's easier to, to figure out what you don't, don't like than, than what you do like. Um, you have to start testing your talents. Um, what yeah. am I good at? What am I passionate about? Um, so you have to really, your change really um, starts to come in when you start to realize, you know what, I've been working in accounting uh, for the past 15 years, but I really don't like numbers. I just yeah. did it because I need, my passion is doing something that's creative yeah. or, um, you know, making music, singing, whatever the case, cooking. Um, so you really have to start to do a personal assessment of yourself. So it's not just know yourself. It's actually know yourself, what yeah. you're capable of, what you, what do you have to learn to get to that next level? Yeah. So that's what know yourself is all about. Well, and I was going to ask you that earlier and I'll ask you that now is, uh, do you miss music? Do you miss producing music? Do you still produce music? I do not. Um, yeah. I do not miss the music um, because I really wanted to go into it for the business. I still love music. Um, yes, I am a Christian. <laughs> I am a believer in Jesus, but I still listen to my New York hip hop. I'm yeah. sorry. It's, 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 <laughs> I, I still do. Um, yeah. um, I still do. So I do. I do love the music. Um, however, I do not miss being in it because I mean, there's parts of my story that I have not shared. <laughs> I have not talked about about being in the music industry. There was a there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of a uh, lot of stuff there. So no, I do not miss it. But um, a friend of mine that I, that I was saying earlier that started a men's ministry with his church, he's a, a gospel rapper, and um, and the music that him and his partner are putting out just gives me just. I just, I just love it. So I embrace it and I support him any way that I can to make sure he gets pushed forward. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to hear some of that too. So I, I need to get that. Absolutely. Cause I like, I like hip hop too, you know, and so yep. there's nothing to me, there's, there's nothing better that, to me. This is one of my things. And, uh, and I did it a little bit earlier tonight. Um, and then I did it, you know, I, we do it often. My family does this often between either myself or my wife and my daughter or all three of us. Uh, we will get in the car and I have a, I have a Toyota 4Runner and I'll get in the car. And I mean, people are probably looking at me like I am crazy because I'll pull up mm -hmm. to a stoplight. Here I am, some 48 year old man and my car is, my, my 4Runner is just vibrating. It's rattling. Hey. You know? <laughs> and I love that. That's, that's I love, happiness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is. Happiness. M music is happiness. It, it, it truly is. is. I mean, and I, I listen to every genre. I listen to everything from hip hop to country to, to, you mm -hmm. know, to um, 
you know, the Christian music, you name it. it you never know what's going to come on, but I just, I turn it up. And so does, Absolutely. Uh, so does my, uh, my family, my wife, my daughter, they, oh, gosh, man, we have, my, my they, there is so <laughs> many miles on my wife's car and mm-hmm. it's because they go and get in the car and they ride around it and they Absolutely. ride around and they just listen to music. And, uh, that's it. and I love it that, that, that we as a family, that it's one of the ways we spend time together. We literally get in the car and ride it, ride around, just, just ride around, get a that's drink, it. drive through and ride around and listen. So if same you, like, here, same here. you like music out there and you're listening to this, we should be getting some thumbs up and some, some hearts on that because everybody should love music. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Um, now let's get into this. And this is actually interesting. Um, I actually did a podcast on this earlier this morning uh, with Patty Moeller, uh, who's mm-hmm. a counselor. And we actually talked about this next word. Um, and we talked about why, the word why. When I was getting my master's degree in uh, Christian counseling, I actually wrote, I had to write a paper about a word. And we had to pick a word. And I picked the word why. And Mm -hmm. because there's so much about this word that can be taken positively, but it can also be taken negatively. And so I looked at you and I said, Hey, Jason, why did you do that? What does that automatically make you do? Right. Put you on the defense. Right. Right. Absolutely. Shut down your, you know, show and, and, uh, analysis and all that. And, and, uh, research. It'll show your body language will change. You'll actually, Mm -hmm. you'll actually go defensive. You know, so that word, why, can be a word that can be looked at as a negative word. Right. right. However, know your why is a different thing. And I think that's what you're talking about here. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, I'm starting to get chills now just thinking <laughs> about that why, because there's so many, so many things. But uh, um, the why is definitely about know your why and knowing your purpose um, mm-hmm. and actually working in that why and purpose. And one of the things, a couple of things I'll, I'll share is um, one, why is because you as a, as a Christian, God, he, Jesus died on the cross for us. Um, him dying on the cross was not just about salvation. Um, if it was just about salvation, as soon as we accepted Jesus Christ, we'll be up in heaven. Yeah. Um, and there'll be no more work for us to do here. On. But there's a reason why he left us here. And the two greatest, pur- the two great greatest commandments is love God with all your heart, mind and soul and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes. And loving your neighbor as you love yourself is a whole lot more is like it's not it's a lot of teachings do just scratch the surface of what loving your neighbor as yourself is yeah. and that's really just giving of yourself and making sure somebody else is better um than you are if you can help them um, be better but one of the things about why is the fact that if you realize that if just one other sperm made it to the egg you will be a totally different person yeah you weren't matt would not be matt if a, right. i'm sorry well, I'm, <laughs> yeah if another right. sperm made it to the egg your hair color may be different. Your eye color, your person, something would be, something would be different. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason why, because you beat out one in a million. <laughs> you yeah. yourself beat out one in a million. But the biggest thing as to why is because uh, the gift that we've gotten from Jesus when he left was the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so looking at mediocrity even in the christian world looking at how mediocrity sets in is because a lot of christians want to pigeon pigeonhole themselves into their spiritual gifts so they feel they take the top five spiritual gifts and they'll just work on the first two but i'm like wait a minute if i accepted jesus christ and he deposited the holy spirit the holy spirit's spiritual gift is not just this one gift yeah i got all of god in me everything the, all of Jesus, all of the Holy Spirit, all of God is in me, and the Holy Spirit is not limited. Yeah. So my why is because he gave me all of him, I should be able to go out and do everything and do all of me yeah. that he wants me to do. And I know it's going to be wrapped, uh, my purpose is going to be in serving somebody else and making sure that they're better, bring value to them, and it's also going to bring value, happiness, and joy to myself as well. So that's where the better life is, is finding what your why is and finding what your purpose is so that you can go out and make this world a better place. Yeah, I absolutely love that because I think it's all, 
it's all of our purpose. We're, we're put here for a reason. Uh, we're put here to live in the image of Jesus. Uh, he died on the cross from us. You know, there were 12 disciples, right? There wasn't, mm -hmm. there wasn't, uh, you know, he made 12 disciples. And for those disciples, it was to go out on the world and, and, and make other disciples. And that's Absolutely. really our job is to go out and help others. If we're not pouring into others, and I mean this wholeheartedly, if we're not Absolutely. pouring into others, we're wrong. Because that's, that's what Jesus put us here to do. That's what Jesus was here to do. That's why he was on the cross to die for our sins. You know, mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough to go to, um, to uh, Israel. I went there last year. Mm -hmm. if they would have put my hand, you know, where Jesus hung on the cross. They would have put my hand where he was in the tomb. I was able to get baptized in the Jordan. You know, yeah. I did all of that. And it, it's the most amazing thing when you feel that energy of what, mm. how, what he did for us. And you feel it. I'm telling you what, if, if people can do anything, go. Walk the walk. Walk where Jesus walked. Touch where he laid. It is something that you can never get back, that you will never, you, you just, I just can't even explain it. But, mm -hmm. you know, our job is to go out and help others. And, and unfortunately, we don't see that enough. No. We don't. No, we don't see that. What we see is, um, I, I hate to put it as even with Christians and other religions, uh, what we see is come to me and do it my way. Yeah. You know, come to me and do it my way. And Revelations talks about they will be overcome by the word of the testimony. So it's just what I'm going through and how I'm able to be made better. Let me just show you what's being done for me. Yeah. And if I can help you along the way, that's what you do. And it, there's uh, the previous church I was at stated, uh, you don't have to believe here to belong here. Yeah. And um, that I believe that is a great statement to, to live by because it's not about helping somebody who's the same as you. It's helping somebody who's not the same as you. So we can do outreach ministries and do all that. But the thing is, we have to make them better and just not just give away something free. But what are we going to do to lift them up off their feet and take them out of that muck and mire as Psalms like to talk about? Yeah. Now that's so important. That's, I mean, it really is everything that, you know, for you and I as Christians and everything that, you know, we believe in that's, that's why we're here. Um, Absolutely. And I think if you go back now, let's come back full circle. And if you go back to now, what you walk through to get through you, you know, to where you are, where you have been, and then the men's group that you have, uh, you know, have created and are a part of, that's what you guys are doing. You know, that's what, that's what's so important about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what's very important. And now we have the opportunity to be able to, to give it to others. So yeah. we, we as a men, as the group that we have now, we've been, we've all known each other for, I want to say, for the better part of about three or four years. And a lot of us in the group are actually very good friends, very close friends, very best friends. Where um, We're now taking this out into, into the world, into the yeah. streets. So, yeah. so we're awesome. out there teaching, teaching others. Well, and I was going to say, um, you know, what's next? What's next for uh, Jason Aubrey? You know, you talk about being a coach. You talk about being, um, you know, what you want to do. Let's talk about what's next for you. How are you going to uh, expand on this? Well, right now I am in a rebranding um, phase. So I'm actually strict, um, strategically uh, placing myself where uh, me personally, my foundation is going to all about being better in health wealth and mindset yep. um and so those that's what i'm working on as far as my coaching business is concerned my mentoring um me personally from my household um that's what we're gonna that's what i'm going into so i'm rebranding my coaching business um waiting for this whole COVID 19 to be over this way we can get back we are yep. the adam group is in is in um, the detention center. We are in the uh, all boys detention center. Yep. So waiting for that to go open back up this way. We can go back in and pour into those guys because I know that they have missed us. So yep. there's a real value that was happening there. Um, so, and then I'm starting to, I'm getting into another business about health and about teaching people how to be healthy and how their immune system, mm -hmm. which 70% of it is in there, is in the gut. So, yeah. Um, What's next for me is just a rebranding and then I'm going to relaunch, um, relaunch with the coaching business. I have a couple of books that I'm currently finishing up. Uh, so to get those published and out there. So that's what's, that's what's uh, coming up for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I look forward to you being a part of Convene. We've talked about that. Absolutely. You know, uh, yes. We're building some special stuff, bring your, your stuff that you're teaching uh, into Convene. And I, I just think that's awesome. You know, John Hunt, my friend that I talked to today from Atlanta, is tuning in. So I want to say hey to him, uh, a guy that just means the world to me. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, listen, I just appreciate everything you're doing. We're, you know, I look forward to building this friendship. I look forward to, you know, doing work together with you, making a difference Absolutely. in people's lives. I think we need to expand on this, this group of men, you know, uh, all over the country. You know, we need to bring these men together. And Grayson Marshall and, and myself, we talk about this all the time. It's, it's, Absolutely. It, it's allowing men to, you know, be a part of each other's lives. And so, look, Absolutely. man. I totally appreciate you uh, being on uh, with us. And, Thank you very much for uh, everything. Yeah, so uh, let's keep the, the communication going. Let's build you a group within Convene and this rebranding. Make that part of your rebranding. And there's no time to wait, man. We got to get on it. No time Absolutely. like present. Absolutely. Like yeah, there's no time. I, I mean, <laughs> a lot of time. I, I just posted on Facebook not too long ago that uh, um, a, two things happened with time over these last couple of months. It's been taken away for a lot of people. And a lot of other people have been given a lot of time. So that's our biggest, that's our number one commodity. And we need to take advantage of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Elizabeth uh, Boo Archer. All right. So let me tell you about this. Um, so she went to college with uh, Grayson, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so her nickname's Boo. She's listening in. She's in the waiting room. I'm going to go grab her in a second. And so my call sign in the Marine Corps was Chuckles. So the other day when I was talking to her in the, in the uh, pre-speaker talk, uh, we decided that this is getting ready to be the, uh, the Boo and Chuckle show. So. <laughs> oh, it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to tune in for it. So. Yeah, you need to tune in for it because I think I couldn't stop laughing. So this is getting ready to be funny. Uh, so, yes. hey, brother, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for everything, sir. Continue to grow this relationship. And uh, Absolutely. thank you so much. So we'll take just a couple minute break, uh, guys, and I'll be right back. And Elizabeth, I'll come, uh, boo, I'll come get you. And it's, it, I get ready. This is going to be off the hook. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you, sir.